Hi everyone, uh, my name is Santosh Kotla and um, the basic reason for me to um, put this video on YouTube is uh, to encourage as many people as possible for the CCNA which is the Cisco Certified Network Associate test um, and I just wanted to give you my ideas and a few tips from me on how to prepare for the exam. So basically, well, um, there is one false thing that I read on the internet about the CCNA test and that is that the test is not easy to pass through. Well, this is actually a very intimidating statement and I don't support it at all because no matter what the test may be, it may be too difficult, it may be too easy, every certain test is designed in a way that you have to put in the required amount of work and the CCNA test isn't something that you have to work extraordinarily hard to pass the test or something like that so that is a very wrong statement and uh, I myself was scared after reading it I was kind of intimidated but uh, later on when I took the test I felt uh, I should probably spread the message that uh, the CCNA test isn't really as difficult as what people um, say it is. Well, the basic thing of um, cracking any Cisco exam is to first get an idea of what you're studying. I mean, I know it's going to be in bits and pieces. You will be starting right from the basic subnetting and then you come to know about routing protocols and uh, then you get into more of how a router and a switch works and what are their functions and then after all that when you come up to configuring a router that is when you get into subnetting because you have to put in IP addresses and uh, you have to use IP addresses for access lists and um, um, and other parts of uh, configuring a network so basically they are a, they are just few things that need to be mastered um, and they're really not very difficult it just requires basic mathematics and uh, just to understand on what format your IP address or your MAC address and 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 how you subnet it and you just have a complete idea by putting all the bits and pieces of information that you learn throughout your CCNA course. So, um, well, I would say the first thing to master is subnetting. It is really important and I would say it, it takes up to like 60 to 70 percent of the whole test. If you're good at subnetting, that means you can you can crack the simulations, you can uh, crack questions that are um, based on subnet on, on IP addresses and uh, you know giving different IP addresses to different routers and uh, troubleshooting a network because you will be having uh, problems you will be having scenarios or simulations where actually they have configured something wrong and they want you to go ahead and correct it and basically um, mo most of the times it's going to be something uh, based on subnetting it's it has to do something with the IP addresses so then after that is the routing protocols, which is the EIGRP, the OSPF, the RIP, RIP version 2, um, and uh, IPv6. Well, IPv6 does not take really, um, you know, a, a major part in the exam, but you need to know what an IPv6 is and, uh, and what are the features that an IPv6 gives over an IPv4. So putting all this in mind, um, I would say when it comes up to routing protocols also you would need to exactly know the features of each and every routing protocol apart from just the commands on how to configure it and uh, you know how to get it set up and running so you need to know what the administrative distance of each of them is and if you had a, um, a choice between an EIGRP and an OSPF on a certain kind of a network or an OSPF and an RIP or RIP version 2 then which one of these would you choose or if you configured both of them then which one of these protocols would the router take so I guess you understand what, what sort of a question it is because I faced that question in my exam where I had uh, a choice between EIGRP and OSPF so um, I think um, IPv6 uh, it is 
the technology that is going to be implemented it has not yet been implemented completely over the networks but there are networks that are working on ipv6 and when it comes up to um the ospf and the routing protocols they're all they're all just whatever i said and after that is uh, the subnetting that is going done and